I'm a big music fan, and there's a lot of controversy going on as I record this tonight, and this is going up immediately. As you know, I put videos up for the When I'm Not Podcasting series, but this is one of those where I just got to go and make a comment about this while this is hot. I saw the controversy going on over the weekend where 6 9 or Takashi from 6 9 is complaining about the fact that billboard chart manipulation happened. This is nothing new. But 6 9 as we're going to go into the story from Pitchfork, uh, he says this new song came in at number three this week on the billboard charts. And so with that said, you're looking at everything else that's going on. Savage becomes number two. And Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber stuck with you comes up to number one. Now, I'm not sure where the numbers kind of tabulated to get to that point. But let me just show you the one of the easiest things that really contribute to the really to what goes on for what counts towards the charts and what song what songs actually make up to the hot 100 let me go ahead and show what i got here now first i'm going to go and take this story is from the iaal this is the story um, about spoofing and fake plays the effect of fans faking interactive streaming numbers to boost chart metrics so here's what's going on so now billboard is the gold standard by the charts in the uk it's the official charts in australia's aria and there are others so the thing is is that the singles chart is compiled using an undisclosed ratio of digital downloads, radio airplays, and streams of the songs. And this has changed over the years. Since 1996, or actually since 1991, Billboard was actually the barrier, the barometer, for what songs played on mainstream radio. And mainstream radio didn't necessarily mean top 40. We didn't necessarily have pop radio. Because what you had in 1991, songs from groups like the Two Live Crew, when you started seeing songs from Pearl Jam and Nirvana, when the mainstream started diversifying into rock, into hip hop, and started really spreading out with a lot more language, a lot more rage, a lot more energy. You know, some of the music that we heard before was starting to change out. R&B wasn't necessarily, you know, considered mainstream. But then what would happen is songs would then be crossed over. And that's normally how things would work out going forward. In 91, we also had a change where Nielsen came in and started using SoundScan, a service that would actually digitally or you know, by, by computer be able to go and tabulate record sales. And we had actual physical tangible units. Well, the Billboard chart has to continue to change because of all the streaming services, because of social media, and because of digital sales. So again, album sales, digital downloads, and radio airplays. <clears throat> album sales referring to CD or vinyl sales, if there is any that are still being done. Physical units being bought, which is very minuscule. Digital downloads, you know, when you're looking at the amount of downloads that can be made for an album, you know, it's like, say Taylor Swift in a, in a first week can pull out 200,000 downloads, which is huge. Nobody else gets to that. Now, for this song from Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber, this got 60,000 units for a single, by the way, not an album, but for a single. Then there was radio airplays and streams of the songs. Now, I haven't seen what the numbers are for Spotify, Pandora, and the others, but I'm sure the articles are, when I've pulled up are going to give me that information. So Nielsen collects sales data. And again, we look at the streaming component, which is weighed according to a point system. And this is from 2019, but this is pretty accurate what they are right now. They've made a little adjustments here and there. But so audio streams like Spotify and Apple Music give it one point. On demand video streams like YouTube and Vivo gets 0. 0.67 points. And program streams by internet radio services like Pandora get 0. 0.5 points. So paid streams are weighted more than free streams. And that's where they're going to go on with. And then there's also a lot of streaming platforms that are considered Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. And then you have the Global Music Report that is published and also shows paid subscription streaming services and other things like that. So the manipulation of the charts, here's what we got on this. Measuring the success of labels and artists, there's no surprise that there are allegations of manipulation. Billboard charts were manipulated previously by making phone calls to retail stores across America, inquiring as to their sales numbers. These kinds of oral reports were obviously unreliable because the labels would give out free albums and gifts, which constituted great incentives for store owners to boost the numbers. And we had payola back in the day, and I've talked about that as well. I'm a broadcaster's podcast the most part, but I actually have a video coming up this week that will talk about Payola because that's back in the news right now with the record companies. And this right here should get some people to get their uh, ears peeled on and keep their eyes peeled because they need to find out what's going on right here. 
So now this is the same day Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber's single Stuck With You came out and was released. The same time Gooba, the new single from Takashi 69, came out as well. <clears throat> Reported today, the Billboard Hot 100, saw, the singles chart, Reported that Gooba landed at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj's Say So was number one last week, dropped to number two. And Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber's Stuck With You was number one. And what's interesting is Savage, the remix with Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce, was number two last week and dropped. So here's what we got. And in this, there was a video that was put up on Instagram by 6ix9ine. He says... That the video shows scrolling through an unidentified chart forecasting uh, that the record label provided to him stuck with you, jumped from number five to number one in one night. And that was the Friday report. So leading up to the week, it's going to be a day or before the billboard charts go by Saturdays, the week ending on Saturday. So the night before the billboard charts tabulations are ended on that Saturday, the end of the week. That's when the tabulations will go through, and then they have basically 72 hours to go ahead and report. Sometimes it takes till Tuesday. It just depends. So 6 9 makes a mention that Billboard caught, is caught cheating. He said, you're a lie and corrupt. You got caught cheating, and the world will know. And Billboard has responded back to them. So here's what we got from this story. Let's go to what Billboard says. Now let's see if we're going to get a paywall or not. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, look at this. We got it. We got it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So, and there's a normal story that comes out by Billboard that reports on the chart beat, on the actual, what goes on. They actually had to go ahead and give an explanation as to what happened. So, to respond to 6 ix claim that his song, which got, and this is why the numbers really count. Okay, let me just show you this real quick. If you look at the numbers for Gooba, at this moment, it's got 189,000 streams. This is just an example of what we're looking at. If you look at TikTok as a gauge, everybody's doing some kind of a dance challenge to that song. I didn't hear Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber hit anywhere else. Now, I believe it hit number five in the UK chart. So it, if that song was going to make it, it was going to make it number one. But obviously the US is the target. When you have two big stars like that, I mean, Ariana Grande, every time she puts out a song, they expect that song to hit top, like at least the number one, because that's what her track record has been. And for Justin Bieber, have her having a, a, a really bad album coming out with Changes, the which had Yummy and Intentions, and it's really just did not forever, did not do well, did not perform well. It's a subpar album. We all see that right now. It actually came out late last year. And if you need to, I'll just recommend Gossip Boy and Honest do a great job of reporting on that. And let me also give a shout out. Uh, Mark Grondon, who does the Billboard Breakdown, does an excellent job. And I'm telling you, he comes out tomorrow. I implore you to go ahead and watch his countdown because he'll break this down. And I'm sure he's going to have a whole lot to say about this. And he does a very good job of breaking down everything, new arrivals, who drops, who comes up. And he evaluates all the songs. So this is going to be a great controversy to hear on that show tomorrow. I can't wait to hear what he says about that. And then for, if you just look at the multitude of songs that were put out by Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. Now, Gooba only had one thing that came out. I mean, maybe there was a lyric video that came out. Maybe there was something else. But look look at all the versions of, of things that come up. I'm going to change my screen right here. You have the official video with 39 million views. And by the way, tagged as a fundraiser by YouTube. Then you have the lyric video that came out. And that had 7.7 .7 million views. That's on Justin Bieber's account. The other song was on Ariana Grande's account. Then you have the Mother's Day edition. That was on Justin Bieber's account. And again, 2.9 million viewers. So you have others that put out lyrics and this and that. But seriously, when you look at this right here, you're looking at 46, 48 million views on YouTube. If I want to look at the Spotify 200, I could probably look at that as well. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick while I have a moment. I have that somewhere up here. Let me show you right now what the Spotify chart shows and I'll give you that information. So here's the top 200. We're gonna look global right now. At the moment, this is as of May 17th. At the moment, Blinding Light still leads all. Well, actually that's the daily. Let me go to the weekly real quick. All right, Blinding Lights right now, number one, 37 million streams. 
Stuck With You is number two. Gooba, number four. And that's a pretty good gauge. Like I said, when you're looking at it right there, and then Blinding Lights, I haven't even looked at how many streams they have so far, but that song actually dropped off. But there's radio airplay. And what I don't know about the radio airplay comes from what is going on with the music right now, with uh, with what's being said right now for Media Base, which tracks the radio plays. So when I look at this real quick, and I go ahead and pull into the Media Base, I can look and see what songs. Obviously, radio is going to go ahead and give a lot of you know, credence to a song like uh, Stuck With You, obviously being a song that's going to be put up there, you're going to obviously see songs that are going to be put up there that are, are going to get looked at more than anything else. That's pretty obvious. So when I look at the song charts, and if I look at, let's say Z100, let's see if Stuck With You got up on the chart. Well, yes, it did. And let's see where this is charting right now. This is from Media Base, from Industry Directory. Let's see where the song actually came up. Well, first of all, you can see right here across the board, the song has airplay on radio. So that is what's helping out with that. So there's a there's a credence to be said about how radio gives a whole lot of weight to what the song does. Now, Gooba, I guarantee you, is not on this list. Because that song, it's a song that's just very, it's raunchy. And it's very explicit. They're not going to put that song out there. So, I mean, you look at that, there's a difference between what is saccharine and what is censored, basically, by the terrestrial music industry and billboard gives too much credence to terrestrial radio that's just the bottom line of that now gooba actually got number one on the streaming songs chart so there is billboard saying okay we gave you a little bit of credence there you do get that now coming back over let's go ahead and go to the six nine claims and what billboard says streaming numbers visible to the public and audio and video do not reflect the volume in billboard's chart cal calculations neither do the streams count services that make available to content owners including 6 9 and his team, directly through a proprietary data feed or dashboard. Instead, each provider provides a post-audit number to Billboard and Nielsen, excluding streams that do not meet long-standing charting parameters such as U.S.-based only plays, minimum play length, excessive plays, and lack of user verification. It's applied to all songs from all artists. The 30 million streams that 6 9 said Billboard counted matches the included charter for all video plays. The number is more than any double, more than double any single week video stream for any song so far. And as for the YouTube visible play count, counts are for global plays and absent for any other auditing filters mentioned above. Billboard counts U.S. based plays for its charts. And then the forecast at Hot 100, uh, the Hot 100 at 69 put on his Instagram video, they said the chart forecast reference was not created nor provided by Billboard to the industry. Those with access to sales, streaming, and radio data, radio data from various sources often create their own chart models, update them, update them their own frequency. Billboard does not distribute any Hot 100 ranking forecast to labels, management, or artists. And then there was a 24-hour sales spike was stuck with you, alleged by 69. Here's what they're saying. Stuck With You was available through the weakest digital download, various format digital download combinations through the web stores for Ariana and Justin. Sales spike is likely referring to Thursday, May 14th, the final day of the tracking week when Stuck With You singles were put for sale in both web stores. Well, look at the kind of promotion that was being done by the, this group here to make this happen. Let me just give this to you right here and show you what they were doing because this is quite an interesting point here. If you look at what Twitter's doing right here, this is going from a this is from 1989 out chart on Twitter. Here's what they did for a charity single, by the way. This is supposed to be for fundraising. This was to sell records. We don't even know how many of the proceeds are actually going to this, but here's what's being said. They actually put out this following list: four official videos, which we showed you. A relationship reveal and a music video, Mother's Day version, taking advantage of the global pandemic for a hit, a seven-day countdown, 12 physical editions. Spotify ads, Apple Music, Spotify, a TikTok challenge, which I know I didn't think got any water. Then you got a hundred million plus playlist audience reach alone. Apple Music notifications, same thing for YouTube, likeness of alleged murder in the music video that stirred controversy. Spotify notification for non followers, Instagram, Facebook ads, merchandise bundles, three CD versions available, three different vinyl versions available. Which one though? They were giving away free stuff when you were buying the album. On top of that, three different cassette editions, radio deal on pop, radio deal on hot adult contemporary, iTunes discounts, digital market discounts, payload of 60 million, 60 million for the first day audience, a banner and number one positioning of on iTunes and Apple Music. So they were already putting it up their way ahead. Number one on browse for you and best new music on Apple Music, 
claim the donate net profits on the song, but we don't know how much after the payola of net profits will be left. Again, net profits. So there might not be any, but there, there, there might be, they're, they're going to have so many costs that go behind us. The record label is going to be behind us right, right there. Okay. You already see that happening. The bottom line is it's not about six, nine being right or not about Takashi. I'm going to say that this is indicative of the radio industry and the fact that I don't know why billboard plays to radio billboard should not give a shit what radio thinks of them. Radio should not get the weight that they get. Okay. Radio has a different list. They use media base. It's a piece of shit. It's a piece of shit. They don't even give it. It's a manipulated market driven research that's done by the likes of iHeartMedia and others and Sirius and all the other terrestrial outlets, the traditional AM FM satellites. They're the ones that control this list. They don't even take, again, I could show you stories and, and facts uh, and surveys that show you how it takes nine to 12 weeks for a song that might be viral and popular that will be all over TikTok, all over Instagram, all over everything. And for the credit, Takashi, he's, put, and listen, he's a rat. <laughs> Let me just be first of all, okay? That guy is a fucking rat. I can't believe he's out of jail on house arrest. But let's just say this: I keep, I'm, I'm seeing the comments about this as well. That people are actually really enjoying the song, even though that guy is. <laughs> it all accounts a piece of shit from everybody what they're saying. Now I don't know the guy from Adam, and I don't have a bone to pick in this fight. I just think it's interesting that I want Billboard, and maybe this just maybe this is what they're going to get for this. Like I like the fact that billboard gives me a chart and it is indicative of what really people are listening to. But my problem is, is that this is the case where radio gets too much. We see how many songs and how many times an artist gets up the, to a spot. Look at the last year. Why did it take Doja Cat so long to get say so up in the charts? How long, why did it take so long for Megan Thee Stallion to start getting airplay on radio? Right. They're all, it's all late. When I think of what the UK charts, they're much, I mean, and that's a government controlled thing. BBC radio, but yet the official chart, they put that official chart out as a countdown show every Friday. And you know what? You actually hear the songs. So I heard stuck with you in their chart. I heard Gooba in their chart. How long does it take for Ryan Seacrest and America top 40 to play that? It's going to take about three months. You know why? Because Ryan Seacrest sound countdown is a is complete horseshit. It's manipulated. You can see the artists they bring on there that are just like, you know, you need a boost for like Katy Perry because she's American Idol related or Sabrina Carpenter or Fletcher or, you know, whatever. One Republic. They all get that boost. It's because of this. It's because of media base. It's a piece of shit chart. Casey Kasem in his dying grave would roll over if he knew that this is the way things are being done. The Billboard 100 chart, the Hot 100, that's the gold standard they talk about. That's the one that's been around since 1950. And the fact that this chart is getting ridiculed because of the fact that radio can manipulate it. That's the whole point. It looks bad. <clears throat> and there have been times like this before. This is nothing new. Like you go to Washington Post, they could tell you about, they used to be the browner for music success. Are they meaningless? Well, this is showing you how they're, they're, this is a shot at them. Look, yeah, the song got the number three, but let's be obvious, okay? Gooba just got more play, just because it, it, just because you're trying to, you know, nickel and dime U.S. and global streams. So how many streams was that? You know, here from the you're telling me global streams are going to count to Takashi six nine. You're telling me that he is more globally recognized than Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber? Are you kidding me? You got to be crazy. So I don't like the explanation that Billboard gave. I think they're, they're, they're at the behest of the record labels because they have to play nice to them. It's obvious. Now, I respect Ariana Grande because I love her music. And I'll tell you what, when she put out two albums back to back, she basically screwed with the system of radio because then there were like, what, five songs in the top ten? First person says the Bee Gees to do that, and then they couldn't. I mean, the radio couldn't even handle it because they're not allowed to. iHeartRadio and the other stations out there are playing top 40. You had Thank You Next, you had Breathing, you had you know, God is a Woman, you had uh, no, no, what is it? Um, I oh, forget the name of the song, No Tears Up to Cry. You had all those songs all back to back to back, top 20. 
in any normal phase, those songs would all be in, in high airplay. You could have put five back-to-back on your Grande songs on Top 40 Radio, and you would have credence to do it. You have the reason to go ahead and put all those songs up there. But then what happened here, more than anything else, is manipulation. <clears throat> this is the record label doing this because radio is not playing fair. Okay, radio wants to only play the artists they want to care. They are censoring. They're censoring music. They're censoring what the mainstream audiences want to play. This is why I have been pushing back and saying the Billboard Hot 100 to its default, okay, even though it has its faults. It should be the default. It should be, media base should not be the gauge for what the audience falls, okay? Everywhere else they have a solid chart and the American radio, and the sales and the streaming reflect it. Well, streaming only counts for so much, and that's the wrong thing. See, Billboard needs to go and switch that around. Streaming needs to be much more important. Just be, no, and honestly, album sales, absolutely. You make that the weight of everything. Sales, that's what's important. But when you're making radio important to this, it's not anymore because radio is irrelevant. And that's on them to become more relevant. They are not doing the right by getting this all squared away going along on this but either which way back into Washington story watch the post story so you have drake and kanye west this is from july 2018 uh, they both flooded the american consciousness with music this summer and you had kanye west come out with a series of seven track albums and then drake came out with scorpion with 25 tracks so then either which way kanye g chopped uh, got to the billboard top 200 uh, albums chart set a record every single song they made in the top 40 and that was seven tracks so all of them hit the top 40 album bomb happens all the time drake got an album bomb the baby uh young boy never broke they all get album bombs it's all the time taylor smith when she gets a new album just to be with a new album they all get album bombs that's what the bellboard hot 100 is representing and that is correct and that is accurate so now you have all this and then beer bongs and bentley's post malone same thing and that was at that same time so again, the records are unsurprising. They're a function of the charts. That's pretty tr- that's pretty trying to figure out how to rank music in the streaming age. So again, they have a section for streaming songs, but the Hot 100 needs to incorporate all together. That's what they need to do. So again, in this story, they ask about if records are being broken every time the chart bearers change rules, then do they mean anything? Is it fair to compare Beyonce and the Beatles? It was harder to purchase the White Album than to stri- put a stream of lemonade on repeat. Yeah, so you could go to history and going back about songs that have longevity and why a little uh, sex Old Town Road, which hit 19 weeks on the chart and breaks Despacito and breaks, you know, One Sweet Day and all these other songs going back and comparing their chart runs. Yeah, it's going to be different now. But okay, it was. 1958, that was the official chart. But Billboard actually started doing singles before. But the Hot 100, the official chart was 1958. And this story came out because of the 60th anniversary when they came onto it. So now, in this, um, Billboard has tried to stay in front, constantly reconsidering how to react to new technologies. They're always reconsidering what a song is downloaded is worth between what a song is between a stream and a radio play. The thing is, at this point in 2020, damn it, they need to get rid of radio airplay. They need to minimize that. Because I'll tell you what, Billboard can actually manipulate back at radio. Radio has too much power for being so irrelevant. It's like government. They should not have this kind of power. They don't represent the people. Radio represents certain record labels and their advertisers. That's it. They don't care about their DJs. They don't care about their staff. They don't care about their listeners. They laugh at you by putting voice track out there, by not letting you call in about a song. They won't let you go ahead and make a request. They won't even hit you up on social media because they don't care. Meanwhile, Spotify, Pandora, Apple, all these different outlets are all caring. And then you can be the representation of what songs may are the best. And that's the point. And at this point, it's stupid. So you're not able to go ahead and say, okay, these songs, you know, these are the songs people want to hear. If you want to hear Gooba and Savage and Say So, let me guarantee you one thing. These stations right now, when I look at All Access, I guarantee you they're not playing these songs. Top market stations. The biggest station in the world. Doja Cat right now is number one. But how long did it take for that song to get there? It took weeks. It just got to number one last week. But it had been on the chart for months. Harry Styles' Adore You is an old song. Dua Lipa, that came out last year. 
Blinding Lights, also older song, but that was also pop, top song. They're still playing Post Malone Circles because it's still a top 10 song. But again, if you look across, let me see. Gooba, I guarantee is not on here. Pow Fu, Coffee for Your Head, that's way down there. And then you're looking at songs that they have on here, and it's like they're so out of touch. When you look at what songs are popular, why J.P. Sachs and Julia Michaels, which is popular right now, and it's getting all the way up on the charts as well, why that song isn't higher up, it's number 15 on this particular chart. And I could go to other stations. I can go to Los Angeles. Same thing goes. You have all these different stations and everything that they're doing. And I've talked about this all before. And it's it's embarrassing to see all this. But it doesn't matter. I mean, this is how things run. When you have two big solid artists, they can't disappoint because that's their careers. Because the careers of music artists, because the way they are, you know, they can be hurt by a bad record and a charity album not hitting number one when they think it's supposed to happen you know like american idol they're going to try to re-release we are the world and it wasn't good nothing like the 85 classic but this is what they're going to do they're going to try anyway and it's stupid and this is what they do with themselves so again uh billboard was trying to reach out with the album merch bundles which is exactly what i just talked about before with what Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber's record labels did. Because Nicki Minaj, she put out 109 singles. And it was only on the piggybacking of Doja Cat that she get a number one song for the first time ever. Out of her, what, 12-year career? She's been charting for over a decade. And she couldn't get it by herself. She had to piggyback off of somebody else. The last time she charted high up in the top 10, guess who she was featured on? A Takashi 6 9 record. Fifi. That's how it works. So, in this story from Noisy by, by Vice, they mentioned the fact that gone are the days where people go to a record store and buy an album. The streaming landscape, figuring out how many albums an artist sold feels like complicated arithmetic. So, again, in this story, that they say that the industry doesn't really understand the calculations of how the charts are being put together. Because you have Nicki Minaj and Travis Scott, DJ Khaled and Tyler, the creator. Billboard is offering clarity on the matter, but they did put out new rules back in January 2019 to try to fix this and to correct it. But again, it's not perfect, and I'll give them that. But for the fact that we're seeing this right here, and you know, Billboard's not necessarily denying the numbers. They're not falsifying and just you know crapping all over what 6ix9ine said. They had to actually give some credence and they actually had to go ahead and give an explanation to their tabulations to go ahead and try to save face so they show the rules <clears throat> and then the thing was is all the bundles which is again look at this list of what they did look at that long list of for just a charity album which i'm telling you it might get number one it's going to go away after a week that's it now the live lounge which did uh which is bbc radio's uh series they also put it on the bbc tv show it's uh, like unplugged, like MTV used to do back in the day. Well, they did a song, uh, something like this. I think it was called, or um, Times Like This. And then you had, it was a full-fledged all-star record. Dua Lipa was on it, and Marie, and uh, I forget all the people that were on it at once. But that hit number one for one week and dropped. Because it's only to be one week charity record. But that's what they're trying to do here. Because it would have looked embarrassing to the record labels, to Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber, and to all their staff and management, that would have been an embarrassment if Gooba and Six Nine hit. Same thing went back in the 70s. I still think about it's very comparable. And if you ever watch the Top of the Pop story of the series, their documentaries, 1977, I believe that was the year of the Jubilee, the 50th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth being in, or 25th anniversary of, of Queen Elizabeth being in reign. And then what happened was, Sex Pistols put out the song God Save the Queen during the Jubilee. So in, in, the, in a major celebration of the Queen's 25th silver anniversary, her silver Jubilee, and the Sex Pistols put out a record that was basically bashing the monarchy, bashing the Queen, and just shitting all over it. And the official charts company basically came in and manipulated the chart, and records were sold physically to get Rod Stewart's The First Cut of the Deepest. Uh, that song became number one because what happened was not only if the song made it to number one, the number one artist in that official chart would have performed live on national television on the top of the pops radio, uh, top of the pops television series. 
So to save face, it would have been an embarrassment to see the Sex Pistols and God Save the Queen make it as a song. So instead, they got Rod Stewart's record amped up to make it the number one. It was a screw job. And I believe that, you know, this was the, the fact that Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber, first of all, they put out a lackluster song. It's not good. It's a charity record. It was rushed. For two artists that could do much better, I mean, there, there's something with that. I mean, this was rushed. This was put together. It's like, okay, let's go ahead and make make uh, use of the doom and doom doom and gloom pandemic. Let's put this song out. It was mediocre at best, and I'm sure other people were saying the same thing about it. And Takashi Six Nine's record, it's viral. Everybody is dancing to it. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, like he's you know just shitting on everybody. And even though the guy, the most jail, people that look at him coming out of jail, out of house arrest because of COVID, and being a, basically a rat. He doesn't care. His head is, he doesn't give a shit. I got to say, man, that's, I got to have some, some kind of respect for him to kind of put himself out there. Like, I mean, I think that guy is going to probably get, uh, I don't know what's going to happen to him if he ever gets seen in public. If somebody's decided to take a hit at him, I'm not condoning anything at all. I'm just saying that this guy lives on the edge. You can see that. And I mean, the reckless d- just doesn't care. <laughs> This is it. But you can't deny the record had play. 139 million views in 10 days. That's crazy. That's mad. That's a lot of views. And yes, you could say people kind of viewed it over and over, but really, that's just wide praise. And a lot of different people dancing to that thing on TikTok. I mean, what can you say? And people viewing it. I bring everything else. So he puts it out on Friday. He called it out beforehand. He wasn't doing it after. He said the writing was on the wall. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right here. Manipulation comes into play. Back in the story about Washington Post, let me go, or his advice, let me go back to this. So again, the idea was starting back in January 2019, any merch included in a bundle must be available to be purchased separately. Bundles must be priced $349 higher than the individual product. And that's the minimum that needs to be priced to count on the charts. So there were song, there were art albums like, okay, Say uh, energy treat packages that were sold on a third-party site for DJ Khaled's father of Assad were disqualified from boosting the album to the top of the charts. So again, there are rules on what's being allowed. It's basically payola. That's the whole idea. Concert packages showing as well. And the skepticism that we're talking about is this. Is bundling leans on a central question. Does the sale of merch equate to the sale of an album? customers never really usually had the option to get an attractive piece of merch without the album. So the purity of an album became distorted. This is according to the Billboard Head of Charts interview with Wall Street Journal. This is Silvio Petrio Luongo. The allure of a trendy shirt or concert is not always synonymous with fandom. Sometimes it's just the fear of missing out kicking in. The Billboard's attempt to do a better job at quantifying who's actively seeking music from the industry's biggest artists speaks to how popular streaming has become. Total album sales, physical and digital, in 2019, down 18%. Again, sales do not matter. Radio airplay does not matter as much as the streaming. Streaming and digital sales should be the priorities. Those should be the ones that get major points. Radio airplay needs to be punished right now for what they're doing. And let me tell you, they're going to get punished pretty soon. The AMFM Act is coming at them. The music modernization, they're going to get hit up for, pay, for not for payola, not just for payola. They're also going to hit up for royalties. Because I'll tell you what, radio needs to be hit up big time for what they're doing. This is in bed with Billboard or in bed with the record labels to do this. And they're only helping out certain artists. The indie artists are not getting shit because on top of that, I've talked about this as well. Payola only works for the big labels. So the indie people that might have money to put in a sleeve in a record or put money out or some kind of a gift to a DJ or a program director to get a song played. That's not allowed. So streaming is the Wild West. Streaming is where the true world of music popularity, of viral, trending, YouTube approved, Twitter trending, Facebook friendly, you know, Instagram sensational. Like that's that's what it is. Instant hits. Radio doesn't even come close to that. And sales, they don't matter as much anymore. Subscriptions do. And you know what? Streaming works better for the music labels for, for the artists because the artists are getting paid royalties. They're actually getting more royalties than radio would ever give. And that's what's important. 
Radio has a lot of lobbyists, a lot of help. And Billboard needs to recalculate. First of all, radio needs to recognize Billboard as the gold standard once again. That's one goal I would hope, ultimately hope would happen. And then radio should get punished by not being counted as much to the Billboard charts. Because Billboard should only care about radio when radio cares about Billboard. Like it did for the first, what, 33 years of its run? That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way rock and roll started. I don't know what this is. But thank God for Pandora, Spotify, Apple, and the others for giving us streaming because those charts matter and Billboard at least counts to that. But they need to realize in this day and age, the bundling and all this other stuff the record labels do, that's fine. But you're letting radio determine too much of what's going on. And radio is a dying medium. It's dying. And as for radio, they need to find a way to resuscitate. 